Hi guys, Tony with Dive Tech in Grand Cayman. I would like to give you some tips on how to best maintain your Fisher cable with your rebreather. Here at Dive Tech, we see a lot of rebreather divers come through here, and we're still seeing a lot of Fisher cables on people's computers and rebreathers. A common issue I'm seeing is people not knowing how to maintain or take care of the Fisher cable. Okay, if we look at the Fisher data sheet for the Series 104 connector, we look down here and we see that it's only rated for two meters of submersion for 24 hours. And if we poke further in this document, we see that it doesn't have great corrosion resistance from salt water either. So both these things can be problematic when we use them in a diving environment. Let's first examine the plug mechanism and see exactly how it operates. You can see there's a sliding collar right here, and when it's moved in the forward position, there's some tines on the very end of it that get expanded outwards by a little tiny flange. And what that effectively does is it locks the tines outwards and locks the plug assembly into the female receptor on the computer. I'm going to open up a 3D rendering in SolidWorks of this plug assembly here, and we'll zoom in. You can see the chamfer that I'm talking about more clearly and the tines and how that operates. Now, a common problem that I've seen is people leaving this connection permanently installed into their computer. And what can happen is over time, salt water corrosion will seize this mechanism in place and prevent it from sliding rearward and unlocking it. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure that you disconnect this frequently and make sure that you clean it. Make sure this sliding mechanism operates freely and also the locking collar below it. It's worth noting that there's two types of this plug out there. Some have a locking collar, which when rotated in the forward position, locks this plug and prevents the plug from being disconnected. Some plugs do not have a locking collar. Here we have the female plug, and this is where it can get really problematic. The O-ring that seals this plug is recessed completely down inside of this assembly. And I'm gonna open up another 3D rendering. Worth noting that this uh, rendering that I have here is a 9-pin connection. We use a 7-pin connection on the rebreathers, but aside from that, it's identical. And I'm going to do a cross-section here, and if we open this up, you can see the O-ring here in green, all the way in the back of this connection. It's impossible to access this O-ring. It's impossible to change it. So you've got to take a lot of precautions to make sure it stays clean, it doesn't get any debris on it, or it doesn't get torn or cut in any way. One of the best practices is just making sure that you unplug and plug it in a clean environment and then when this computer is not in use you make sure you have your plug installed at all times. When we look at the male side of this assembly the sealing o-ring makes contact with this face right here. So you've got to be very careful to make sure that nothing damages or dings this face. If there's any deformities on here whatsoever that's going to cause a leak in your computer. Best practice in that regard is to make sure that when the cable is not in use, you have a cap put securely over the end of it. For cleaning and maintenance, what you want to do is get yourself some Deoxit Gold, uh, also known as G-Series or Gold G5. This is a gold contact cleaner and it's recommended for use with these connections. Deoxit makes several products, so you want to make sure you're actually getting the Deoxit Gold. And what you can do, you just spray it into your connection here. Try to get more of it in the connection than you do on the computer or your workbench. And if you still see some evidence of corrosion, uh, you can use a little toothbrush and just clean that out gently. And the same goes true for the male connection. Just spray a little bit in the end and let it sit. One of the other issues I see commonly with these cables is people putting unnecessary stress where the cable meets the plug itself. That's really not good for the cable, and to illustrate why, we're going to go back into SolidWorks here, and we're going to bring up our rendering of the plug, and again, we're going to do a cross-section view, and we're going to look in here, and now this is a very basic illustration, but you can see these are the wires that come in through the cable, and they get soldered to these connections that are right here. And what happens is when you put unnecessary stress by bending, what you're actually doing is pulling these wires backwards. You're putting stress on this particular solder joint right here, and they can break. If any one of these wires breaks, obviously you're going to lose that particular channel. The center pin here, which doesn't show a wire in it, actually is the ground pin, and that one actually can break quite frequently. If this one here breaks, then you lose data on all three channels because these pins share a common ground. 
These cables, due to the nature of the way they're constructed, they are often non-repairable. This section right here is often filled with a potting agent. Generally, it's an epoxy resin of some sort. But that makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to open this up and to desolder and replace these connections. It's also very tiny, not a lot of space to work in there. Cables vary depend on uh, who the manufacturer is. You'll see that some cables have a lot of strain relief uh, built into them while others have little to no strain relief installed on them. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is the use of mineral oil. Shearwater provides this cute little bottle of mineral oil with any of their products that include a Fisher connector. The purpose of the mineral oil is very simple. It just displaces air that's found in the void of the connector and reduces the chance of flooding when you go underwater. And it's very easy. You just take your dropper and add several drops until the connection is completely full. And once it's full, just take your male connection and insert it right in there. It does require a bit more force to lock the cable in. And then you can wipe up any excess mineral oil with a napkin or towel. So to sum up, make sure that your Fisher plug stays clean at all times. When it's not in use, be sure to put the cap and the plugs on the cable and plug respectively. Be sure to use Deoxit Gold. We'll put a link to that in the description below. And you can use mineral oil, but I find that it's not essential. That's it. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you guys down here with us soon.